there's a reason that when I preach on the Holy Ghost, for me, uh, there is a manifestation of fire that can come. That is a manifestation. But there's also a manifestation of the dove that can come. There's a manifestation of the dew of heaven that can fill the place. Are you guys with me? That is the time. Ta- it like, feels like rain is just falling on people when that happens. He can come like electricity into a place. Usually that is the prophetic anointing. Maybe next month we're going to do, I'll see, we're going to do a month on the anointing, but we'll do, go into all the different types of anointings there is. The prophetic anointing is an anointing that is like electricity. Once it comes, when somebody begins to prophesy over you, or when a prophet is with you and begins to speak to you as a channel from God, as a word from God, you will usually have a sensation that will come upon you. It is the thunderings and the lightnings of God. His voice... <clears throat> sounds like lightning and thundering. Are you guys with me? So say with me the manifestations. So that doesn't make the Holy Spirit a dove. He is not a dove. It doesn't make Him a fire. He is not a fire. It doesn't make him water. He's not a water. It doesn't make him breath, even though he comes in that form sometimes. Uh, it doesn't, and, and even though ruach means the breath, but he's not a breath. He is a person, a personhood of the Trinity. Are you guys with me? He is a part of the Trinity, but he's a personhood. Meaning if the Holy Ghost has to walk into this building today, he comes in walking in like a person. You will meet him and be introduced to him like a person but there's a realms to the anointing and to the Holy Spirit when it comes or let me say to the Holy Spirit Kenneth Yagen and uh, many has made it known that we have the Holy Ghost upon us and the Holy Ghost in us are you guys with me but there's a third realm which is the Holy Ghost with us very clearly in the scripture we see it all over from the Old Testament where uh, 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 where the Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph. In the New Testament, Jesus is saying, He will be with you wherever you go. Alos Parakletos, alongside, the one who walks alongside you. He is not only in you, He's not only upon you, but He can be with you. That realm of being with you requires somebody to press into the presence of God. Are you guys with me? It requires somebody to push into the presence of God. To say that I'm giving my life up to spend in the secret place. But no one can do that unless they have a revelation of God. You can sit here and say, okay, wow, I would like to have this life. You can never have it unless you have a revelation of who God is. Unless your spirit opens. and And He places grace into your heart hunger into your heart to begin to pull you but it starts by somebody that is saying i'm healed it i want to seek your face are you guys with me are you guys with me just help me with the sound i think there it's echoing and feedbacking so you can have dead and we can play dead religion it helps no one i've been in churches and i preach in churches that are thousands and they just sit dead and they cannot respond There's no transformation that is taking place. The ministry of the Holy Spirit, number one, is to convict a sinner to become a Christian. To convict a sinner, an unbeliever, to become a believer. Or a believer that is living a lifestyle of sin. What will happen? The Holy Ghost will... I will never tell somebody stop drinking or stop smoking or doing this. Then it's the work of a man. The Holy Ghost, once you have a relationship with Him... He will come into your heart and He will convict you to say, this lifestyle is not right. Or this what you're doing here is not right. If that voice is not there, you are not saved. You think you are saved. You think you are a Christian. Are you guys with me? And that is what religion has done in South Africa. To make us think that we are Christians without the Holy Ghost. His transforming power is not there. His convicting power is not there. Are you guys with me? It is like, uh, how can I say it? 
um, people believe that Jesus Christ died upon the cross. They believe that He is God because we get brought up like that in school. And all these things, we believe there's a God, but we have never received Him to be in our lives. And as a result, the Holy Ghost cannot convict you of any sin. Because you think you are, there's nothing worse to think you are a believer when you are an unbeliever. And I'm going to end this message by there's nothing worse to think that the Holy Spirit is with you when He's not with you. When there's a counterfeit Holy Spirit with you. Which is many times emotions. Oh my goodness, I've preached at churches. It's like you can preach something spiritual and they cannot respond. And then you have to preach something fleshly and emotional and then they respond on emotions only. And I'm speaking about maybe 3,000 people. And they've been trained in the emotions, not the senses, the spiritual senses. The manifest presence of the Holy Spirit is the one that is with you wherever you go. But it's a manifest presence. It's different when you become a believer, He comes in you. That is where He begins to convict you. Are you guys with me? When you then get baptized with the Holy Spirit by speaking in other tongues, He comes upon you. Say with me, upon. He rests upon you with power. Which means that you are immediately and instantaneously equipped with power to minister, to lay hands on the sick. And listen, how does that happen? By doing it. Say with me, doing it. It is as, that's as simple as that. Nobody knows what they have inside of and who they have inside of them. Unless they go and do it. But religion will tell you, sit in the pews and watch the minister. Are you guys with me? One church that's closed now. They closed down or they didn't make it or didn't survive the lockdown, I heard. They said, I'm not allowed to cast out demons in front of people in their church when we preach there. Well, now where's your church now? Now the demons took over. Are you guys with me? One of the greatest joys that Jesus has, what we see in Scripture, is when His disciples were casting out devils. It says that He was rejoicing and dancing and jumping around. And He was glad that they had the ability to understand that the kingdom of God is inside of them. That there's one, a person by the name of the Holy Ghost. That's not His name, but that is how we know Him. Are you guys with me? The Holy Ghost. That is how we can describe Him. Being inside of us, which is as if it is Jesus that is inside of us. I'm not taking one moment and saying the Holy Spirit is Jesus and Jesus is the Holy Spirit. We see clearly the Trinity depicted in the book of John. We see it in uh, 1 John. We see it right in the beginning in uh, Genesis. We see it in John 1 verse 1. We see how the Trinity is used. We see when Jesus was baptized that in one scripture, the Father was speaking. Jesus was being baptized and the Holy Spirit came down upon him. So it's three distinct individuals yet one. Are you guys with me? So I'm not going to get into the doctrine of the Trinity. But the Holy Spirit in you is as if Jesus was walking next to you on the earth. Even more powerful because He said you shall do greater works than what I did. Why? Because you will have a comforter that is with you all the time. Everywhere you go, you will have a comforter that is with you. Imagine having God on your side wherever you go. But it cultivates a relationship or it needs us to cultivate a relationship. Are you guys with me? Say with me a hunger. I know you're tired after the conference and people are like, we've had enough of the presence of God now. In hell, you will not say that so quickly. The greatest preachers and intercessors are in hell. What I mean by greatest preachers and intercessors, because they're in hell and they intercede for their family to not go to hell. When the when Lazarus and the rich man, the Bible says that rich man was praying and begging Abraham for a drop of water on his tongue and saying, go tell my family members not to come to this place because this place is real. And Jesus said to him, even if they see me, they will not believe me. 
even if your father Abram is raised from the dead, they will not believe him. Are you guys with me? And then you have greatest preachers. They preach to as many people as there as possible, still hoping that there might be salvation. But they won't. We're not living in a place called perjury. Or we're not believing in a place called perjury. That's why I'm saying be hungry for His presence now. You see, one of the greatest things that, of, that, that grieves the Holy Ghost is bitterness, offense, and anger. I'm going to say it again. Bitterness, offense. You know how many people are angry with me? And I can choose to become angry with them. But I will grieve the one that I need the most. Are you guys with me? That is why social media or the internet and all these things have destroyed people's lives. Because they base their identity on the amount of likes they get. Or the amount of comments that is being written to them. And they think that is who they are now. No. You are the person whom Jesus has died for, but who is found in the secret place. It is His voice that you need approval of. Are you guys with me? Apparently, I have one month left to live according to somebody. The nonsense we get into when we lose the Holy Ghost. The manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. It takes a sensitivity to keep Him by you. Are you guys with me? Go with me to, go with me to Luke chapter number. Let's first go to Luke chapter, uh, sorry, John chapter number 1 verse 32. And I'm just going to jump around a little bit this morning because I want to get my heart through to you and I want to get what heaven is saying. So I'm not fully going on what I've prepared or anything like this, but listen to this. And John bore witness saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a, like a dove. Say with it, like a dove. And he remained upon Jesus. He didn't only stay there for a while and lift it. He remained upon his life. Can people say that the Holy Ghost is remaining upon your life? That where you are, there's a tangible presence. Or there's a sensitivity to the voice of God. There's a sensitivity to the hearts of people that you're ministering to. Or who you are with, just in case the Holy Spirit wants to minister to you something about them. It takes a sensitivity and a hunger to have Him drawn closer to you. Are you guys with me? Sympathy is sensitivity. So it says the Holy Spirit remained, remained upon him from that day on forward. Uh, go with me to go with me to Psalm chapter number 63. Psalm chapter 63. Listen to this. Say with me a hunger. Say it again. Say a hunger. If you don't have a hunger for the Holy Ghost, I want you to catch it. We have a lot of people that watch us online with us also. Those who are watching from home. It is one moment. It is by one ounce. A lot of people say, but how do I get hungry? Okay, you pray for us and all these things, but how do I get hungry? Say with me, by faith. That is it. There's one thing that pleases God, and it is faith. Those who diligently seek Him. But how do I seek Him? By faith. The faith is a substance that comes via salvation. Are you guys with me? In fact, faith is given to each person even before their salvation. So that at the moment of salvation, they have the ability to believe on God. That is why even unbelievers can receive healing. And why Jesus looked at them and said, I see you have faith. Yet they were unbelievers. Are you guys with me? So many times unbelievers have more faith than what believers have. But how do I see the face of God? How do I seek the face of God? How do I get to a place where there's that hunger in my spirit? Say with me, faith. Faith means there's no negativity. There's no bitterness. There's no anger. 
There's no self-pity, moping. You know, when I look into people's faces, people here are worshiping others, it's like, Heere weet, jy moet gaan vrak evers anders. They're just standing there. And they're believers, they're not unbelievers. I, unbeliever I can understand. Because you don't know even what, who you're worshiping. That I understand, that's fine. Until the Holy Spirit knocks on your heart's door and that'll be given an opportunity. Some reject them, some don't. Some reject them because they're proud. They don't want to answer an altar call. Or they don't want to do, they're proud in their hearts. Their hearts has become ardent. Some do it because they have masks and they want to pretend or they're scared. What is these people going to think? What are they going to think? I promise you. And just because of that, they reject salvation. Because the Holy Ghost is a gentleman. He will come and ask your permission and just put a tugging in your heart and pull you. He will not come and force you. Never. Because then we blame God and say He goes against our will. Are you guys with me? So it takes a sense. I see people standing and they're worshiping and they're just like, and they look around. Now listen, the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are unseen are eternal. Which means that during worship, the moment my eyes are open and I'm just looking around and looking at, okay, here uh, the preacher comes or, you know, I'm in the flesh. And you're looking at things that are temporal. You're unable to go into the eternal. When people have the ability to close their eyes, they know how to surrender. But when your eyes are open, you're in the flesh realm. And you'll see very little I pray for people whose eyes are open. Very little. Because they're still in the the realm of flesh. Many times the Lord will tell me, don't pray for that one there yet. And then I'll think, but why are you saying that? He says, they're not ready. They're still in the flesh. They're not in the spirit. And if I would go and pray for them, they'll just stand like a rock. Are you guys with me? Because their natural is defying everything that is happening and resisting everything that is happening. I've been at churches where you preach and there's like a lot of people and they all look like unbelievers, but they're supposed to be believers. It is so bad they cannot even understand John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That's how bad it is. I'll just close my eyes like this and preach the whole service with closed eyes. I've seen it. My team around me have seen it. If I battle, I close my eyes. Why? I don't have to look into their faces, number one. Number two, I look into the things which are eternal. Because He said to Jeremiah, do not be dismayed by their faces. Do not say, for I am a youth only. Are you guys with me? Why do we have a team of a lot of young people? Because Jesus' disciples around him, who was called apostles, were between 15 and 28 years old. Not 40 or 50. Now in the church world, we're waiting until somebody is 40 or 50, and then we say, oh, you can go do your ministry, brother. Listen, how are we ever going to change the world? And the previous generation has done it to us. And we refuse. That's why they rejected me for so many years. Because I refused to conform. Not and rebellion. I was submission always. Are you guys with me? But to sit and wait and wait and wait and wait. And you know, okay. Um, this, uh, 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 this individual, I'm going to, you know. I have a ministry. But God, even if God speaks to them, they're not going to hear. And we refuse to train up or send people out. Because we want to protect kingdoms. And watch as I prophesied and said, you will see many mega churches closing. It's already happening behind the scenes without you knowing. Decisions have already been made. Many in this nation. It'll be a shock. Do I find joy in it? Absolutely not. Somebody says, you prophesy in the closure of churches. No, I'm saying what God is saying and what is happening. There's a big difference between the Lord says and the, this is the Lord's will. Big difference. Are you guys with me? What I perceive and the Lord's will, big difference. But by, if you just have a little bit of common sense, you can see what is happening. There's mega churches in this nation that has never sent one person out to plant a church because they hog up the pulpit for themselves. And that type of Christianity God is getting rid of. Are you guys with me? That God will make sure that His kingdom is spread. Huh. 
I'm not, not going to say in some things because that will offend uh, too many people. But God will make sure that things will happen. That His kingdom can continually spread. Are you guys with me? But how does none of this is relevant or none of this is even matters if we don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? Listen, my ministry is based and came out of the hunger that I had for God. A holy hunger that was put in me in the age of 17. When I got saved, I was just hungry after Him. I didn't know why. I didn't know anything. I didn't know one scripture. But there was something in me that was hungry for God. It was the Holy Ghost. God put it inside of me. Why can't He do it with you? What does it require? Somebody that is saying, I'm not going to care what others think. I am just hungry. I have faith inside of me. Just a faith. I believe that God can do the impossible with my life or it can do great feats and great journeys great victories with my for those who know their God shall be strong and do great exploits says Daniel the people who know their God say with you know their God shall be strong and do great exploits listen the people who know him intimately have your seats intimately there's a people listen it is one thing to know God it's another thing to be known by God it's one thing to seek God it's another thing to be sought after by God make your heart in a place where God can begin to seek after you the Bible says he sought after a man who was after his own heart and he found his servant David. Which means God was seeking for David, looking for him all over the earth, to and fro, for somebody whose heart is loyal and strong. Are you guys with me? What is the thing that makes you distinct, that makes God to be seeking after you, that you know when somebody's life must be changed? Or there's something that you have to do, a mission, an assignment that the Lord has given you, that He's saying, I'm not going to do anything with unless I can find that one. Because I know that I've put grace upon him. But I've seen him worshiping me in the backside of the desert, looking over his father's little sheep. I have sought him and I found a king amongst my people. I have found my servant David. Are you guys with me? Is God seeking after you? Or is he resisting you? The Bible says that grace is given to those who are humble who humbles themselves but god resists and pushes away the proud which means that what makes god seek after me so with me faith and grace when i have faith and grace it makes him seek after me some people are here they've lost their relationship with the holy ghost 30 years ago and they still think they're with him you've lost him 30 years ago 20 years ago and you know it, you just don't want to admit it. I know it's a hard message to swallow, but Jesus' parents was walking, went to the annual feast offering. And they did their offering and they came back and they, forgot, they didn't even realize they missed, they left Jesus behind. And when they, in a day's journey, they realized they lost Jesus and he's no longer with them. And they got a shock. Anxiety came on them. Fear came on them. And they went back to look for him. And it took them three days to find him. You will look, it'll take you longer to find God than what it takes you to lose him. Or let me say it like this, it'll take you longer to find God again, the manifest presence after you lose him. You can lose them like this. The, you know, we have a saying, when God comes in, He comes in loud. But He leaves quietly. When the devil comes in, He comes in quietly. But He leaves with a bang. According to Scripture. And the presence of the Lord departed from Samson, and He knew it not. Jesus was missing from His parents. And they didn't even know he was missing. They thought he was still around. And some people live their lives as if his presence is still with them. 
and they have replaced it with a counterfeit Holy Spirit. Are you guys with me? Which is emotions, or they've made up a Holy Spirit according to their own desires. And say, but this is God. God is speaking to me now. No, 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 no. How do we, we need to get back to the source where power is. Where is the power of God? It is hidden in His presence. In the place where God dwells, where you spend time with Him. Habakkuk chapter number 3 verse 4 says, In His hand was lightning and thunderings and rays. And there the power was hidden. And there His power was hidden. It is in a place called the secret place where the voice of God, the thunderings and the lightnings are. Where God's, when the Bible speaks of His thunderings and His lightnings, it is because of His voice that is present. Are you guys with me? Centurion looks dead today. It is okay. I don't know if it's a bunch, if, 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 it's, if we have a bunch of unbelieving believers or religious believers. Or um, if you can catch this one key, the hunger of the Holy Ghost. Go Psalm 63. Listen to this. Oh God, you are my God. I wanted you to take David's life. A man that was after God's own heart, sought out by God himself found by the Lord to be anointed as king yet he was a little boy it is still happening today God finds young people are you guys with me and I'm, let me not only say young people God finds people but in the backside of the desert where nobody thinks of them and he looks at their heart if he finds a pleasing heart he anoints them they will be drawn to kings They'll, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. The moment the oil touched David's head was the moment that an evil spirit came upon Saul. When David was anointed, God created a problem for his anointing to solve. The very moment in day that he was anointed. When the anointing of the Holy Ghost comes upon your life, God will create a problem that only your anointing can solve. I don't know if you understand. Whether it is business, whether it is ministry, whether it is politics. Say with me the Holy Ghost. That's where it starts. Have your seats, have your seats. Psalm 63, listen to this. Oh God, you are my God. Early, say with me early. This word can mean many things. It's not waking up early. It means first. It can be two o'clock in the morning. It can be five o'clock in the morning. But it is in a place where no one before anybody is awake. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh, now listen to this, my soul thirsts. So with you, my soul. So you have a spirit, a soul, and a body. Give me three chairs here. I put it on the stage like. Far away. Like one in the middle there and one at the end there. At the end, at the end, at the end, at the end. Okay, that's fine. So, so is spirit, soul, body. He says, my soul thirsts for you. What is your soul? It is your will, intellect, and emotions. It is your ability to think. Your ability to have intellect. It is your ability to reason. That's your soul. Are you guys with me? Um, David is saying, everything in my soul, my will, my intellect, and my emotions wants to is thirsting after you. You cannot thirst after God unless everything in you wants Him. When I say, okay, uh, my spirit wants what my soul, I'm still divided, man. Early 
will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh, say with me, my flesh longs for you. Say longing. Longing is a word, a spiritual word. It is a spiritual terminology for seeking. It is when you long for God. It is a craving that comes out. It is a supernatural craving in you that comes at the moment of salvation at the baptism of the Holy Spirit. A craving comes in your way. The way as you crave for a certain food or certain thing, you have a craving towards God. If you don't have it, I question your salvation. Are you guys with me? I question your salvation. A lot of people are saved religiously. He says, my flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Say with me, your power and your glory. The result of the power, uh, sorry, the power and the glory, the result of that is found in a place where your soul thirsts, where your flesh longs. Are you guys with me? Now, I'm not here to preach this really. Many of you have seen us or may see me minister on this, but you have the spirit realm that's here. Then you have the soul realm that's here. And then you have the flesh realm that's here. And that's not my message for this morning, so I'm not going to get into the temple and the three realms and everything. But let me just say where Jesus, where David said, my soul thirsts, my flesh longs. You have a realm that is fleshly, a realm that is soulish, and a realm that is spiritual. Where Jesus says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. This realm here, the fleshly realm is the asking realm. Ask and it will be given to you. The second realm is the soulish realm, which is seek and you shall find. And in the third realm, the spiritual realm, say with me, is the realm of knocking. It's the knocking realm. Okay, so this is also the outer courts, inner courts, and holy of holies. Spirit, soul, body, soul, spirit. It is a place. Put on the scripture for me. Psalm 63. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts. Next verse. My flesh longs. Say with me, longs. So to have here a lot of people, Christians, who live in this realm here, it's the realm called flesh. It's the outer courts. These are the ones that are unable to close their eyes and go into intimate worship. Are you guys with me? Please just look around. It's the devil or it's flesh. These are the ones that sometimes battle to sit in a service that's longer than an hour. Because flesh pulls demons. Flesh pulls irritations. They're in a realm of irritability. They're in a realm where this demonic is attracted to them. A lot of strongholds. They can never, God lives in this realm here. Are you guys with me? Not here and not here. He lives in the realm of the Spirit. He says, I, I, wish, I seek those who worship me in spirit and in truth. He says, I am looking and I'm seeking for somebody. Where? Those who worship me in spirit. Where was David when God sought him? He was in this realm here. What did David do? He says, I want to see his power and his glory in the temple. How do I see it? I need to go through this pattern. There are patterns and systems on how to get to God. I'm going to say it again. This culture of we want a uh, everything, you know, Facebook is going out now, apparently. Now everybody's on TikTok because it's faster gratification. It's instant gratification. It's faster. And you can't do something longer than 10 seconds. And, it's, it's, and what it happens, what it does is the devil is bringing a thing in where it pollutes the minds of people to be able to rest or to wait patiently upon the Lord or to seek His face. Are you guys with me? So, a generation is breeded 
which can no longer pay the price. Who can go into their room and close the door and say, I'm going to lie on my face until I see the glory of God, until I see His face with no distractions. It was easy 15 years ago when I started because we had no phones, no laptops, nothing. Are you guys with me? Just lie on my face, just had worship music on, there was no distractions. Today we cannot do it and we wonder why don't we have a personal relationship with God. Because He's looking for those who are seeking after Him in spirit and truth. He is looking for those that has the ability to say, I want to seek your face. This is the Jacob generation. A generation that will seek the face of the Lord. Patterns and systems. And Jacob's life became a system for a life to be sought of, sought seeking the face of God. So whenever we want to seek his face, he says, I want you to follow the pattern that Jacob did. Are you guys with me? So God requires patterns and systems to get into his presence. Unless that pattern and system is followed, there will and cannot be results. Because we go into our room and we say, okay, I'm going to read my Bible. You ain't going to do nothing. The Bible isn't read by you. It is opened for you. I'm going to say it again. Nowhere in the Bible does it say read the Bible. It says the scriptures was opened to them. Scripture, every word of God, inspired and breathed by God, written by holy men, filled and inspired by the Holy Ghost. It cannot be read in a form or a lifestyle of flesh. You cannot open this word when you are in the flesh. The only way you can open it is when you are inspired by the same Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost. Are you guys with me? You will not understand this thing. You will, you will think, okay, I read it yesterday. It will so lie to you. You will convince yourself you read it yesterday. But in reality, you read it three years ago. This is the power of the Holy Spirit I'm speaking about. There's patterns and systems that God has incorporated that you cannot get. How do we get salvation? By the blood. By Jesus Christ. That's the pattern to heaven. Other things have patterned, but what happens is the doctrine of grace that was preached where it says we don't have to do anything in relation to seeking His face anymore. I don't, know, I don't know. I know there's nothing we can do to lose our salvation, but there's a lot we can do to seek His face. It still requires a life of a cost, of a high cost, paying the price. Are you guys with me? This price caused, caused Paul to be stoned to death caused his feet to be beaten by poles till the bones in his feet was crushed. Caused him to be in shipwrecks, to be eaten by wild animals almost, to be hunted by beasts, to be thrown into prison. It caused Joseph to be falsely accused for rape, then to be a slave, then to be in prison. It caused David to be hunted by Saul. The very man he loved and served. The anointing will mess you up. By a place where there's a price to pay for it. But the price and the process we go through is to stretch you to make you carry the glory and the dimension that God has for you. Otherwise, you will be unable to carry it. It will be messed up in a week or two weeks. Are you guys with me? So what is this price what is this cost many times it is time just you think it's going to happen next year but it happens in 15 years and you have this dream of ministry and this dream of things and God is saying 20 years you're like okay you're still not ready because if I give it to you earlier you will mess it up like a kid with a with a handgun in their hand the handgun might be something for good but it can mess up if it is not in the hands of a correct individual so what does the process do? It makes you useful towards God. 
Are you guys with me? God is not looking for a surrendered vessel. He's looking for a useful vessel. He's not looking for a vessel that can preach the word. Even the devil could preach the word. He's looking for a vessel that's been changed by the potter's hands. That's become useful for them, fit for the master's use. What is that going through patterns to say, I want to get into the secret place? So how do I do it? I go from a realm of flesh, which is usually praise, out of court, which I'm not going to get into now. But this is my pattern of prayer. Now, when you have done this for years, you don't have to start here. You start immediately there. But it is initiated by God. And you get here, the Bible, Paul, uh, David says, my flesh longs for you. So what takes me from here, the outer courts, where most Christians live in the fleshy realm, is a longing in their hearts that pulls them into the second realm. What takes them from this realm, from the soulish realm to that realm? He says, my soul thirsts for you. And the thirsting takes them from here into a place called here. Are you guys with me? And what here embraces is a realm called knocking. In a soul realm, you are still like, I'm kind of like in between. This is when you're in your room now. You're worshiping and you're praying. But you're being pulled left and right and you feel like I need to take a phone call or I need to do this. And, but you also feel the presence of God and there's not a surrendering yet. Until you're pulled into this place. In this place is what the scripture says, be still and know that I'm God. It is here where His voice will speak to you. It is here that when you hear the whisperings of God, where you, you see, in the year where it is by the flesh, and as the temple, the outer courts, inner courts, holy of holies, but it is here where you praise God and you make a noise and you put your prayer list out there and you still speak. And it is here where you speak a bit less, but you may be worshiping now, but, but in this realm, you don't speak. God speaks to you. What takes you from that realm to this realm is a funeral on your knees, a death sentence on your knees, or where you're lying on your face to the ground and you're saying, God, I'm so hungry for your presence. Even though it doesn't feel to you like it because you are still in the flesh realm here, everything is pulling you and is distracting you. It's like you can hear cars driving on the outside or hearing family and this and that, but once you reach the spirit realm, the noises becomes less. Because you're changing an atmosphere. You, your spiritual ears are beginning to open. And your natural ears are beginning to close. When you enter into this realm. All of a sudden it's like you don't hear cars driving by. You don't hear any outside noise. Because the ears of your spirit has been opened. Are you guys with me? So what is the take? Patterns. So now you're sitting here. And you begin to seek and you begin to pray. But there's every noise that is happening. Everything that is distracting. But you press on and you press through. And you just pray in tongues. Let us you read your Bible, you're praying, you're praising, you're worshiping. Then there's a moment. It can take one hour or it can take two hours. For some in the beginning, it can take five hours. But if you don't get to this realm, God is going to require your flesh to die. In this realm, you're gonna feel a need to fast. You're gonna feel a need to pray or to fast or to cut things out, to be more sensitive to the Holy Ghost leadings, which I'll get into now, and we'll be finished in a few minutes. It's sensitivity that pulls you into this, a longing. A longing is a spiritual pull that is in your spirit here. Paul says, I have longed to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift. What takes impartation? So with me, longing. You see, if I come and preach here and nobody wants me here to preach, I don't even want to be here to preach. There's no longing. Nothing will happen. Paul says, I have longed to come to you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift. Learn to be a people that can put a longing in their spirit, a knocking in their spirit. Are you guys with me? With gifts that we have on you and guest speakers we get out and have a longing and a knocking to say, I want to have more. 
I need more. Remember with me being here almost every week, people will become familiar. That is fine. And then we'll just do one or two things now and then just to shock a few or so. Or uh, I'll just pray and I'll say, God, just vindicate. Uh, just let them know that I'm still a prophet. I know I'm pastoring here and shepherding here. And that's sometimes the disease that comes in called familiarity. And that is why I stopped prophesying for about a year. Until such a time where, which I have been fully, fully released, but uh, um, we teach in the mornings and we do that in the evenings. Tonight we're going to carry on. Well, I still want to just finish this message, but tonight we're going to get into the stenazo of the Spirit, the tarazo of the Spirit, the different voices of the Spirit in you, in the Greek. How He warns you, how He tells you where to go, where not to go. Are you guys with me? That's the leadings, the divine leadings of the Holy Ghost. But it starts off by having a relationship, which starts in this place here. Which says, I cannot get there. I don't understand what Leon is preaching. He's saying, soul place and all this stuff. I don't, your flesh needs to die. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies. It cannot, say with me, cannot live. This realm further than the flesh realm requires death in your life. And once you pray a prayer and you say, God, use me for your glory. Kill me. Kill my flesh. You will see persecution beginning to come, beginning to, come to you. You'll see family members rejecting you. Friends cutting you off. That's what is happening? It's death that you have prayed for. So that Christ can be resurrected. In... You cannot get to the throne without the crucifixion and the resurrection. A resurrection cannot come without a crucifixion and a death. The pathway to the throne is through the death and crucifixion. For it is no longer I who live, Paul says, but it is Christ that lives inside of me. For I have been crucified with Christ. Have you died with Him in a place where you are no longer offended by what others are doing? Have your seats, have your seats. Are you guys with me? Some people get offended if you just tell them no in church. One woman comes up here, she thought she had a ministry. First of all, she's a witch. So she comes here. It's first service here, she walks up to me, she says, no, she's called to be a worship leader if she can sing. I said, listen, if she can sing it. I said, it does not work like that here. Now, when you have discernment, I could have just said, yo, hacks. <laughs> and say, uh, next week, uh, another church. They gave her a stage. I think she was two months there. She's gone. Discernment. Pastors lose. We have churches. <laughs> we call them falter churches. Okay. So, it's like... Every fish tank has a certain filter that cleans the tank. Or they have a crab that, or a certain fish that cleans the tank. I was being against churches. But everybody that's offended leave from your church and goes towards them. And they become a blessing in the kingdom. Because they clean your church out from all those that are offended and bitter. Are you guys with me? I'm serious. And they work just on transfer growth. They were just on transfer growth. I've seen it for many, many years. There will be transfer growth to a degree of running a church. That's normal. But your ministry can't depend on it. You can't be sending inbox messages to our members and saying, Come, uh, man of God, come to my church so that I can prophesy over you. And under my anointing, only will you grow. Shut up. You can't think getting members of another church. And they do it all over. Another false prophet came and did it with one of our members. And we had to jump in and stop the situation. And I called the person out publicly. Why? Because you still have gullible people. From all the preaching that comes from the pulpit, you would think, dear Lord Jesus of Nazareth, born of Mary. Uh, um, like how can people still, after everything I've taught them on the prophetic, go and listen to a false prophet? Something is not right up here.
and give money. But we don't see a tithe or offering. And this, this prophet is just taking that money and going to do scams. <laughs> Let me not say prophet or false prophet, just to go do scams. These things happen. It has become an industry. The prophetic ministry has become an industry. One preacher sat with me. And they wanted prophecy and all this stuff. And I said no. In terms of they wanted to know how to do it. I said no. And uh, then they asked me, you know, how, but how much money do you charge for this and that and that. When it comes to like prophetic schools and so on. I said no. You know, this is how we do it. The next day, they're doing it. It's become an industry. I haven't done it because of an industry that have carried this gift for how many years? In fact, we don't want to do it. We can make a lot of money if we want to. But it's not the will of God. It's not the leading of the Holy Ghost. If you don't follow the wind, you become resistant to what God is doing. You become an industry merchandising the Holy Ghost merchandising the anointing are you guys with me so sensitivity so with me sensitivity so people want to have ministries they want to enter into the call of God for life whether even business and I'm busy <clears throat> writing a book where I'm speaking about the connection of angels and prophets and ministry angels and angels that is given to every single person where you should have faced death or been dead an angel was there to protect you somebody was praying whether it was years before somebody was praying angels don't move without prayer unless they're assigned to you you have every person we see in scripture every child has been given an angel then you see how there are ministry angels every church has an angel Every business has an angel. Why do you think some people can do business and others can't? Go to Daniel 4 verse, I think it's 4 verse 16 or something. Uh, Daniel 4 verse 16. Why do you think some people can do business and others can't? Are you guys with me? Why do you think some churches take off and some don't? Why do you think some churches work and other, or some at the presence of God, others, it doesn't matter what you're doing, there's nothing there. There's not an angel assigned to them. They're out of the will of God. They're doing something that God has never called them to do. I said, our church never stopped growing. It was just a lockdown that pulled us back. We kept on growing up until lockdown. We had two morning services, a little bit fuller than this. And then we'll go to two morning services very soon again. Because once we hit here a certain amount, like let's say 3.50 or so in the morning, uh, we're going to have to go to two morning services. But next week, Sunday, starting at 8 a.m. I heard not everybody was happy with that. But I couldn't care less. <laughs> okay. so, um, so we're doing 8 a.m. here. And then, because I have to be here and by Kruger's door, going back and forth just does not work. And it is not the design of God. But where was I now? So every, So some churches have angels, some don't. Some businesses have angels, some don't. And it's like those individuals just know how to do business. And we can see it in scripture. But let me just say, listen to this. Let his heart be changed. Speaking about the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. Daniel is going to interpret the dream for him. But he's, it, this is the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. Let his heart be changed from that of a man. Let him be given the heart of a beast. And let seven times pass over him. This decision, say with you, this decision is by the decree of the watchers and the sentence by the word of the holy ones in order that the living may know what was happening here. The watchers were standing and recording, as I said to you, there are many different angels. So those of you who are now teaching of angels, one type of angel is a watcher. The only thing they'll do is watch and record. Watch and record. You can be even dying there. They're just recording. You're dying. They won't intervene. And they take that to the throne of God. They establish it and write the books of heaven. Do you think God writes? No. God is resting. They're writing the books of heaven. Angels writing it. If God would as much as lift up from His throne for a split moment of time, 
someone else will occupy his throne in heaven now as we speak just because angels did it once don't think they won't do it again that will be the biggest presumption of scripture the moment that's why he is seated and he doesn't stand up from his throne if he does come into the earth realm as we see in the book of Abraham in the book of Abraham with Abraham's life in the book of Genesis it is a multi-dimensionality that is taking place but he doesn't lift from his throne are you guys with me and then we see how this dream is saying about Nebuchadnezzar is going to be turned into a beast that by the decree of the watchers in in heaven it has been recorded and taken down put the scripture up by the decree of the watchers and the sentence by the word of the holy ones he says this decision has been made intercessors or those who pray as you are praying or as you are worshiping even as a church like encounter here how many times have we seen angels not just me saying i see an angel seen angels come in even if we have to focus and put a series on angels you'll see how many of your eyes will be open to angels you'll see them and feel them walking through the crowd like this pushing and bumping people why it must be preached for people's minds to understand and be opened I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Again, I'm busy writing a book where I'll put it in and it'll be available to, to everyone where it's the levels of sight and how it works. You must be able to first see in your mind before it is coming into the reality. And I'm not speaking of the law of attraction. I'm speaking of the different levels of revelation and the levels of sight. Are you guys with me? Many times people will be praying and they literally see something. What you're seeing there is eternal, the Bible is saying. Then there's the word yet, sir, to bring it from the spiritual into the natural. We have seen gold dust. We have seen oil on people. We have seen the wind coming into you. We have seen this whole building shaken by the power of God. What is that? It's the spiritual coming into the natural. This building shook and the projectors went out of place and a wind came in and blew through the media room. Mara level of encounters where vision becomes physical by the decree of the watchers, meaning that when you're in intercession, you're praying or when you're seeking God like we are doing an encounter, whether it is alone at home, it doesn't mean you are alone. There's somebody there watching and recording in the books of heaven to say that this person here is building a relationship with the Holy Ghost, hungry after the Holy Spirit. Mm, this one here is pretending their heart is fake. Their heart is hardened. Their heart is full of bitterness. They have a mask on that they're friendly with everybody else, but they have anger inside of them. And then people wonder why are some blessed and some are not. Your heart's thoughts, what you say is not recorded, what you think is recorded. You'll get to heaven and God will say, you said in this day, this, this, this. And you'll be like, I never said it. No, you said it in your heart. Remember Lucifer, the Bible says that he said to Lucifer, you said in your heart, I will exalt myself like the most high. I will be like the most high. Where does telepathy come from? Nothing. There is not one thing, whether it's astral traveling or telepathy or whatever you want to call all those things. Nothing is created by the devil. It comes originally from God, then it's perverted and twisted. But the language of heaven is thought. It goes beyond this realm. Are you guys with me? Then the devil comes and he brings astral traveling and he brings this and that. Oh, no, 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 no. There's a way that prophets can move. There's a part that I won't write in the book and that is prophets in your dreams. I'll leave that one alone for another five years well that's maybe only for, for our partners because um, that one will get me into too much trouble so certainly by the decree of watchers doesn't matter what you are, whether you're praying and you're an intercessor a watcher is writing down and then you begin to are given authority and more grace from heaven because that prayer or just the act that you're doing is coming up to the throne of God and God is saying, I need to bless this one. I need to give more grace to this one. I need to give more faith to this one. And all of a sudden, you feel more grace and faith coming into your heart. You might be watching TV, but you have a craving and a longing to go pray and seek the face of God. 
the moment you reject that it is pulled back the moment you answer it you're pulled towards it this is what we call a relationship with God never fall for the junk that is being preached to say no, no it's not about feelings you know it's in your heart and as long as you are okay with Jesus in your heart it's birthing a lukewarm generation that is saying we are no longer being seeking after God with every pursuit or everything that is inside of us are you guys with me say with me holy hunger say I am hungry for the Spirit of God I'm hungry for the anointing have your seats have your seats have your seats have your seats Zerano, Zerano, Zerano. Lebroska abreke de noske e de la brado noska adenamos e ketai. Leske brado shke de lebre de noske taiete. Zerano, oh, 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 42 on let's see from 42 I'll close off with this I want to minister just to one or two people um, and tonight we're going to get deeper and that's when we minister to a lot of people I want to pray tonight for importation of this sensitivity when it comes to stenazo, tarazo, when it comes to epidemia. Uh, it is all levels of how to hear the divine guidance of the Holy Ghost that is in you how his voice speaks is yes, uh, we'll be doing that tonight so while church is still free in south africa you can come okay people don't understand the persecution that's still going to hit the church they think everything is fine and calm now it's called the calm before the storm i prophesied it very clearly but well, people even uh, even the president of a certain party laughed at me when I sat with them one on one, not laughed, but like, when I say laughed, I'm speaking spiritually in the heart, okay? But um, you can feel it. And I wrote down, and I, it was in 2019, November, October. I said, I said, sir, I said, by March next year, I see many dead bodies. By March. And I said, I see the churches locked with locks all over the country and I said in fact beyond the country all over church has been pushed I said the greatest persecution is coming just looking at me I said the greatest persecution is coming to the church I promise you before God I said that then I said okay they want to split your party one two here and this by this one and the name is to this starts with this and uh, okay and uh, just to give them something they wanted to hear and then March came when I say that I still see a persecution there's still a persecution that is coming to the church there's a hot persecution that is coming to the church and if people fail to make it through 2020 I don't know how they're going to make with what is coming what is coming you cannot imagine what is going to come we think it is a disease but it's not going to be something else is coming and by the end of this year i'll unravel a little bit more only from the month of september onwards but uh um that is why we do certain things to prevent and plan for in terms of where we are going and what we are doing but what is it going to take it's going to take people who are hungry set apart where did my ministry start it started in this place here where many of my friends and some are playing around i try to push through Maybe I didn't do it correctly. Maybe some were laughing. It doesn't matter. The watchers were watching. Heaven was recording. And I know what I'm living now is the fruits of what I've done there. Are you guys with me? Then once you reach this round, the persecution that comes to you, oh my goodness. Because here you are not the same as there. Here they'll say to you, but you are only the carpenter's little boy. You can't do these miracles. Or here they'll say to you, why are you judging us? You always think you're so spiritual. 
Here they'll say to you, um, uh, 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 uh. here they'll tell you you have changed. Something is different about you. You know, we don't like this change that is happening. Here you might not greet people and there you have to greet everybody and you are so people pleasing. You just feel you need to greet everybody. Here you can just walk past somebody and not greet them because you're spiritual. Are you guys with me? We always say there's a fleshly person, you have to hug them. A normal Christian, at least if they're a little bit spiritual, you can at least uh, walk past them and just give them a wink and like, I acknowledge you, because they still need that acknowledgement. And then somebody that is truly spiritual, you can just walk past them and you don't even care because you know that in the, in the spirit and they know that you're okay with them. But how few do we have like that? I don't want to come to this church. How dare Leon is so exclusive. Nobody can see me. Have you ever tried? You just assume. <laughs> but uh, um, listen to this. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered, stayed behind in Jerusalem. And his parents, Joseph and his mother, did not, did not know it. So he did not know it. So it's possible for you to lose the presence of God and the Holy Ghost without knowing it. Next verse. But supposing him to have been in the company, they, they still thought he was with them. Now they had a counterfeit. They had the feelings and the sensations as if he was still around. Many believers have feelings and sensations of the Holy Ghost as if He is still around. Tonight I'm getting into the five sensations of the Holy Spirit. How He speaks, how He ministers, how He talks, how His true voice sounds. But we have made Him up to be an emotional substance or a fleshly experience or a soulishal experience. That we think that everything is okay, but it's not spiritual power. It's soulish power. Are you guys with me? I've seen it in ministries. Once they begin to lose the anointing, they become soulish. And there's no longer power to break the yoke, to destroy the yoke. I don't know if you are with me. They have no longer power to set the captives free. People can sit under their preachings and they are never changed for the glory of God. Or they can pray for people and there's never a healing or never a deliverance. There's no longer a devil coming out. Uh, I knew a minister. Well, I ministered once and they wanted to do a deliverance night like we do. And we do it properly. We must do that actually again this year. Because we haven't lost it. It was locked down. And we do it properly and uh, call it a deliverance conference. And then we, so they called me like, the person called me like three hours before the service. So I want to do what you're doing, you know, I want to do a deliverance night. I said, listen, please don't do it. You know, like, it's not, no, 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 man, I'm a, I know how to do this stuff. I said, okay. I said, but when I do it, I prepared my people already like four days before. I took my staff to deliverance. Then I took my leaders to deliverance. And then I let them do it. No, 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 I can do it. I can do it myself. Just tell me how you do it and what scriptures you used. I said, okay. I said, I do it like this and this and that. So there was somebody of our church or somebody that I knew that was uh, in a service there. And, uh, and they tried to cast out devils. There was nothing. In fact, some began to attack them in the service. Are you were there? Yeah, I think you were there. <laughs> no, huh? No, 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 no. No, maybe you were not there. And uh, they began to, then the demons began to attack them. Nothing happened. Nothing. What happens? Losing spiritual power. Replacing it with soulish power. When sin comes in, I allow soulish power to come in. I no longer seek His face like I used to. So there's no longer a conduit and a source is no longer spiritual. The source of power has to come from somewhere else. Because I still have to perform. Are you guys with me? Get spiritual. Spiritual power. Where is it found? So with you the secret place. The place of the spirit. Where God dwells. Where God lives. 
He is here. He is not in the soulish realm. In the soulish realm, it is still us. He's not in the fleshly realm. In the flesh, is completely absent. But in the spirit realm, it is a place where God lives. It is where His power is hidden. In the presence of the Lord. It is there where you will find His power. I'm not speaking of a mind power or a soulish power. I'm speaking of a spiritual power. That no devil can come to you. That once you speak a word... A devil will manifest. Once somebody tries to do you harm, you speak a word. When they try to come against your business, you get on your knees and you say one prayer. And the decree of watchers are recording that prayer down. And it's established in heaven. Why? Spiritual power. Say with me, spiritual power. It comes by nothing but having a prayer. Have you seen this? By having a prayer generated in your church. Uh, are you guys with me? Catherine Kuhlman who pulled out people out of wheelchairs like it was going out of fashion. They would bring them into stretches everywhere around the service and there's a moment in the service where she would usually stand and say, she would talk the biggest lot of nonsense. People would all fall asleep. Everyone would be falling asleep. You can see it on the videos. They're sleeping. Because first they waited two days to get into the service and then they... Uh, then she's preaching so long and she's not saying anything. And then suddenly she will just say, He is here. And the atmosphere would shift. And you would see everybody waking up. It's like electricity would come in. And then people would begin to get healed, delivered one after the other. And one day the journalist came to her. I think it was in uh, Los Angeles, um, Angeles Temple, I think so. And they came to her and they asked her, How do you do all these miracles? And she said, she took them down to the boiler room. That the journalist thought was a boiler room. And he came down, the more he came, he heard a noise of machines and stuff like that. And before she got the noise, they heard more noise. They said, what is this noise? And she said, it's, a power, it's our power generator. And as she opened the door to show them, there were hundreds of intercessors praying for miracles to be taking place in the atmosphere. And she said, this is the power generator of our church. Many people experience breakthrough because of intercessors and they never recognize them. Are you guys with me? It is part of the military of God, the arsenal of God. To clear an atmosphere, to clear the air, is through what? Intercession. People praying, Lasko, Evroska, I deliberated in a morning, before a service or during a service, but they, they're creating an atmosphere that is being shifted and is being shaken. And that is being made conducive for the presence of God to come in. Are you guys with me? Stand to your feet, stand to your feet, raise your hands. La Rosca I wanted to minister to people. I'll minister tonight. Because just for the sake of time. Lasco Ebredenosca tequilebrano. I want everyone just to close their eyes for me. You don't have to raise your hands, sorry. You can just close your eyes. You can just focus upon Him. Maybe you're here and you're standing, and I want to make this call, even though I said I'm not going to minister to people. Now, maybe you're standing and you're saying, Alion, my life is not right with God right now. My relationship, even if you're watching online, you can say, they can pray this prayer with us also right now. Very, very important. Maybe you're standing and you're saying, Leon, my life is not right with God right now. You're speaking like this about relationship with the Holy Spirit, and I know I have fallen short. I know I have missed it. I have lost the manifest presence of God. In fact, so much so that I feel backslidden and I feel that my heart is not right with God. So there are two people that I want to pray for right now. Maybe you are saying you've never had a relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, when I'm speaking now about personal relationship, I'm not speaking about religion. I'm not speaking in name only or how you were brought up or whether your parents was Christian or whether you went to some Enchia church or somewhere. I'm not speaking of that. I'm speaking of those who are saying, I, 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 I mean, I'm not, that doesn't mean that you are a Christian. Even if you got brought up in that and you say, I believe in God, do you have a personal relationship where you're convicted by the Holy Ghost on a daily basis to spend time with Him? If not, there might have been a counterfeit 
and a counterfeit is that religion that is coming to South Africa has produced name only Christians in name only Christians maybe you say and then you fall in that category you say no I've ne- I didn't had a personal relationship with God maybe I believed in God maybe I thought of I've, I've never had a relationship with him I've never come to a place where I've given my life completely to him and he's taken me over and I've built a relationship with him where people can see the fruits can see the change and they are drawn towards God when they are with me or secondly you are saying to me that uh, that um, maybe you have you were on fire or you were close to him but you have backslidden and your life is no longer the same as what it used to your relationship your connection your connectivity with god and with the holy spirit is no longer like it used to be you know you've lost that connection completely even as i was speaking about the holy spirit you might have felt convicted you would have felt him on you whether it was a heat whether it was a knocking on your heart's door Whatever it might be, whatever you have felt, it is Him coming in as a gentleman and saying, it is time to make right and the day of salvation is now. And you're saying, Lord, because of these things, I do not have 100% assurity, 100% assurance of my salvation. I do not know whether I am uh, going to heaven. I don't know if my life is right with God. That assurity has left me or I've never had that assurity. But today I want to make right with the Lord. I want to know 100% that heaven is my destination. But not only that, I want a relationship with this person you're speaking about, which is the Holy Ghost. Without this, nothing can happen. He is the initiator and the activator of everything in our lives. For business to go well, to our relationship with God to go right, for family success, for your destiny, your journey, everything that there is, it is starts by having a relationship with Jesus Christ and with the Holy Ghost. Not our idea of who Jesus is or God is in religion. And if that is you and you say, no, that is me, I want to make my life right with God right now. In this moment, while every eye is closed, I want you just to raise your hand for me. In this place, I see those hands. I see that hand. Thank you very much. I see those hands. I see that hand. I see that hand. Thank you very much. I see that hand. I want to give it a few more seconds. If you're saying, I want to now, to right now, make my life right, I see that hand. Thank you very much. I want to right now make my life right with the Lord. And today I'm starting full out with a fresh hunger. All those who have their hands raised, I want you to come to the front that I can pray for you quickly. If those can just assist them that are with them, I want to personally pray with you. Just come to the front. If you have raised your hands, come church, let's give them a hand. Come on, give Jesus a better hand. So as you're standing here in front, I want to ask the church, everybody to pray with. But right now, those who are here, I want to ask you this. It takes one prayer. One prayer. I did this prayer while I was a drug addict in a drug den. I prayed this prayer. My whole life was changed from that moment onwards. The Bible says, believe in your heart and speak with your mouth. Just believe in your heart and speak with your mouth. We believe in our heart and we speak with our mouth onto salvation. So salvation comes when my mouth opens and speak. And as you pray this prayer, I want you to believe it in your heart fully, knowing, say with me faith. It is by faith. In this moment, all you need is just faith and to say, Lord, I believe in you as I pray this prayer that from this moment, I am not turning around. I want to have this relationship with the Holy Ghost. That Leon was speaking about, I want to have this, this intimate hunger. But I'm starting it here. I want church, stretch out your hands towards them. Those that are here in front, I want you just to surrender like this as you are to Him. And pray this prayer with me. I want to see your lips moving. I want to see you meaning it out of your heart. Say, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name, forgive me of every sin. I choose this day to change my life. Give me the power 
to change my life. I receive the blood of Jesus Christ. I receive the washing of your blood. I receive the forgiveness of my sins. I come back to you today. Or for the first time. But today is the day of salvation. I believe you are Lord of my life. I believe you died upon the cross. I receive my freedom and deliverance in Jesus' name. I command every demon, every spirit to depart from my life, every hindrance to depart from my life in Jesus' mighty name. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me afresh. I believe heaven is my destination that you are Lord of my life. I give my heart to you in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray right now as I come and pray for each one of them that the breath of God will come upon them. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Fill them afresh. A brand new relationship in Jesus' name. take them let's take them you will see ushers behind you they just want to pray with you and give you something give him one more church come on let's give Jesus a praise offering father we thank you for your presence for the anointing may your Holy Spirit be with everyone even as we come back at five o'clock let there be an importation of the voice of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' mighty name, we give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory. 